Okay, now we can start. In the fields outside of Bethlehem, the sheep ate long grass, tended by the shepherds. Have you ever wondered what sheep do while they are being tended? Of course, they like to sleep and eat, but like you and me, they also like to play. You tiny, even even so, but you are spotted. Let's not play anymore. It's time to be heading back to the school. Well, anyway, I'm glad I'm spotted. I don't ever have to worry about being chosen for the sacrifice. What? Are you afraid to die? No, I'm not afraid to die. You know that all sheep accept death without fighting it. But I'm not excited about it happening up on the altar with everyone making such a big fuss about it. Well, I think it would be nice. Why do you think it would be an honor? I mean, what's it all about anyway? Why do they have to kill a perfectly white sheep? Haven't you been listening as the shepherds talked around the campfire? Just last night, they read it again from the Bible. You see, Tiny, I don't think that that means that the shepherds are not perfectly white. They still got But what does that have to do with us sheep? Because Tiny God made plans for the king to wait for men to pay for his sins by sacrificing on his body. Why don't they just pay money for their sins? Because the Bible says that the only way to pay for his sins is by shedding blood to pay them death. Oh, well then why does it have to be a white sheep? Isn't my blood good enough? Because one's probably in this symbol of a messiah. A symbol of what? A messiah. For you really haven't paid any attention at night, have you? Well, nighttime is for sleeping. And I'm not going to snoop in on the shepherds like you guys do when you should be sleeping. You're always sleeping, Tiny. Well, I'm a grown young animal. Now tell me, what is this messiah thing? The messiah is not a thing. It's a man. A white sheep is a symbol of the Messiah who is to a human without any flaws. I thought all men were sinners. The Messiah is not just an ordinary, ordinary man. He is the Son of God. Well, where is he? Why don't they just sacrifice the Messiah for their sins? Sacrifice a human instead of a lamb? 
Yes, that's what my shepherd can to read is the uh, prophecy. Prophecy. Back in days that the Messiah will be the Lamb of God, the Son of God, help us. Of God, help us as a man for man's sin. That will be a sad day when he comes. So it will be a glad day when the Messiah comes. He will take care of the problem of sin and one and for all. And he will just be like a sheep. He won't fight for death when it comes. He will want to die because he loves men so much. When do you think he will come? Nobody is sure, but the shepherds think that he will come from Bethlehem, the city of David. That's not far from here. No, but it could be years and years before he comes. I hope he comes soon. I would love to see the Messiah. It would be a happy day when he comes. When they arrived, they found the homes, the inns, the whole city was overcrowded. Even the stables were packed with animals who had just arrived in Bethlehem. Have you ever wondered how animals felt having it to share their stable, not only with other animals, but with other humans as well? You know, this is getting to be ridiculous. If they try to crowd any more animals in here, us cows aren't going to have a place to lie down and sleep. At least we pigs have a place to sleep in the mud. <laughs> Don't count on it. People are coming into Bethlehem from all over for the census and taxing. What's a senseless taxi? <laughs> Not a senseless taxi. A census is when they count all the people in the land and taxing is when you have to pay the government. Oh no, here comes another donkey. <laughs> There's not very much more room in here. Now don't anybody panic. I'm the last animal. The innkeeper told us that the inn is full of people. There's no place left in the whole city to spend the night. This place was a very loud joke, but the inn is so full that people are sleeping in the kitchen. It's just terrible. Well, if there's no, no room, why are you coming into the stable? I suppose you people are going to come in here and sleep with us animals? I don't like it any more than you, but that's exactly what Joseph is thinking of doing. Mary is expecting a baby, and she's very tired, and I'm so exhausted from carrying her all the way from Galilee that I can't walk another step. What's the purpose of the census and taxing? You mean they're really going to come in here and sleep? The innkeeper told us that this was the only room he had left. He didn't think Joseph would take him up on it. I don't like this whole thing. The census trip. Mary is so heavy, and Joseph is so nervous, and it looks like it might start raining. Now quit your complaining. We just have to make the best of it if they do decide to come in here. Here they come now. Look at her. She really is going to have a baby. Yes, and it could be any day now. I'm afraid with this long trip and all the tension. Now what's to worry about? Yeah, I was born in this very stable myself. Looks like they're going to bed down by the hayloft. It's probably the cleanest spot. But you don't understand. This is, this is going to be a very special baby. An angel told Mary and Joseph that this baby would be named Jesus and that he would be the Messiah, the Son of God. A real angel? Wow. Did you see it? Was it? You mean the Messiah that everyone's been waiting for is going to be a baby named Jesus? Yes, and I'm so worried. Mary doesn't work well, and this would be no place for a king to be born. Mary and Joseph are both direct descendants of King David. The new king should be born in the palace. But wouldn't it be exciting if Jesus the Messiah was born in our stable? It looks, it does look like it, it, it does look like it could be any time. <laughs> no, don't say that. This is awful. <laughs> Calm down. If this baby really is the Son of God, don't you think God would take care of him? 
I suppose so, but this is no place for a king. Maybe he's going to be a different kind of king. What do you mean? I mean, well, I'm not too smart, but look at the m mess this world is in. All the leaders we have tried, they haven't brought peace to this world. I think man's real problem is inside, is inside, not outside. Maybe God's son is supposed to be the king of men's hearts in inside kingdom. Well, I don't know, but look, I think she's going to have the baby right now. I think you're right. Oh, how exciting. They're putting fresh straw in the manger. Let them use the manger. That's the best we can do for the Messiah. I'm going to get cleaned up. I'll go get some milk ready. And I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> That was a wonderful night in Bethlehem as the angels sang Noel. And in the stable, the animals looked on in wonder and excitement at the manger where the, be where the baby Jesus lay. Isn't the baby beautiful? And Mary and Joseph look so happy. I still don't think this is much of a place for King Jesus to be born, but at least he's healthy and warm. Yes, come in. I think we all better leave now. 
Let Mary and the baby get some rest. Come on. Now everyone knows that the wise men came and brought costly gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But who brought the wise men? Why, the camels, of course. And even for camels, it was a long, exhausting journey. You keep hearing voices. <laughs> One of those camels got a lot of endurance. But this trip, this is crazy. It is. Is this what we came all the way for? This baby right here? Yeah. Usually we go seeking treasure and stuff. And all we found is this baby, and I got a bag of chips. <laughs> this smells stale, man. Usually, you know, though, we travel to find treasure and to see something beautiful. But this little baby right here. Come on, this is an old stable. I just don't get it. Let's get out of here. Let's go do something cool. This is boring. All right, well, he must be some special baby. Say, say, where are you go? What are you eating? <laughs> I think there's a peanut butter cookie. I found this on the trail. Oh, brother. Where are you guys going? Don't you want to stay and worship the king? All right. What king? This baby right here? All you two ever want to do is just have fun and go on our adventures. <laughs> Don't you understand how important this is? Nope. Some, no, sometimes we want to eat. But <laughs> Can you tell us what in the world is so important about this baby Jesus? Honestly, these two should be listening more than playing. <laughs> the wise men have been talking about this for years now. Now, this baby Jesus was prophesied about, about a long time. The wise men have been reading the prophecy and studying the season. Please stop eating for a second. <laughs> and studying the seasons when they saw the star. They knew it. Knew it was the time and the birth of the man. Messiah. What's a Messiah? <laughs> oh, brother. The Messiah is the savior of the world. Do you see that man over there? That's Joseph. Mary's baby daddy. Right? <laughs> Wrong. Joseph is not Jesus' real father. God is Jesus' real father. Jesus is the son of God and the born of a virgin. Can't get any more confusing than that. You mean this kid right here is the son of God? Yes. Yes. He has come to earth to save man from sin. Well, this place isn't so bad after all, is it? That's right. Now I understand. Jesus is the real treasure. Whoever finds Jesus finds eternal life.
I don't even know what to say. Um, <laughs> were you not entertained? <laughs> um, the, the, we, we teach here that Jesus spoke in parables so that they could understand complex principles by using common everyday um, happenings. Do you understand the message, though? Amen. That Jesus came to be our sacrifice for the world. Didn't they do a great job? I mean, the camels were a little iffy, but everybody else, fantastic. Um, I want, good Lord. Go ahead and not play. There you go. Um, so I want, I want to thank, um, one, everybody who came to be with us today. Um, I want to thank all of our, um, students and our Sunday school kids, uh, who were here every Friday night to practice. Um, thank you, Marilyn, for working on the choir, Daniel and JD for working on the, um, on the, all the technical stuff and putting in the lights. Um, and Brother Man for building the, the set over here. Um, but Sister Man, come here. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to pay for this and I don't even care. This is the lady behind everything. And we as a church want to say thank you. And um, when we... Go ahead. She deserves that. When when we came, when we we did, we were we were uh, we were online only for nine weeks uh, over the summer, uh, spring and summer. And when we came back, she goes, "Pastor, are we having Sunday school?" I'm like, "Simmer down. Let's see how things go." I said, "Give me four weeks." I said, "Do I want to make sure that you know that?" She goes, I have a plan to space out Sunday school. I'm like, give me four weeks. And I was a little afraid, I'll be honest with you. Um, I am thankful that when God brings people together, he brings people who have burdens for things, right? I don't want everybody here to be just like me because that'd be an awful church. Thank you for not amening. I appreciate that. But I she has a burden for our Sunday school and for these kids, and would come here and cook for them and make sure they ate, and then she would work with them and does that week after week after week. And I am so glad. I, I told her Friday night, and, uh, you know, I, Charity and I get to be the face of Crossroads Church, but Crossroads Church would not exist for, but for the mans and the mans. Um, and I am so glad that God put us all together. Um, and I appreciate your heart. Do you want to say anything? Sure you do. <laughs> well, I think another hand clap needs to go around for all of you. And you deserve a hand clap. And all of these kids, because this would not be anything but an empty room without you. And I know that God uses each and every one of these kids and all that they do when they come home from Sunday school, whatever they learn, and it might be kind of funky, but <laughs> we live in a funky world. It is 2020. <laughs> but thank you all for coming and all your support in this. Amen. Yay. Well, let's stand this morning. And uh, uh, again, I want to thank you for being here this morning. Oh, before everyone change, hey, kids. Tiny, tiny, please come back up here, please. Thank you. Moms and dads, if you want to take pictures, they're going to stay right here while you come up to the front row. Where are you going? <laughs> she, where are you going? Oh, this is how they listen to me. I, uh, if you think it's bad at your house, it's no better here. So, yeah, that's right. So, um, 
moms and dads, if you want to take pictures, or if you're not, grandmas and grandpas, interested bystanders, if you want to take a picture, now's your chance. Come on up here and take a picture. And they're going to stay right here in costume. Yeah, uh, Marilyn, I don't know where you're going. <laughs> Did you have to get your... Oh, you had to get your ears, too. Sundays are weird around here. This is not unusual. All right. All right, stand up, smile. Jack's telling us surf's up, apparently. I don't know. Everybody get your picture. All right. Everyone get a picture. Hold on, stay put, stay put, don't move yet, stay put, come on up, you kind of give it, you, you give them, give them, give them 30 seconds more. This is... Did we get it? All right. Did everybody get a picture? That's your hat. Yeah. Um, let's give them one more round of applause. All right. There are there are some refreshments in the back. Um, please, please. Oh. I. Yeah, we're getting directions from the crowd now. I don't even know. We're so glad you're here, and and apparently, oh, before you leave, Dominic's turning 18. We're going to sing to him. Yeah, come here, camel boy. We, we love Dominic. We abuse him so much, but his birth, when's your birthday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow he is 18. Wow. Who's, whose birthday? Sister Mary will be 18 tomorrow as well. And you're 19 tomorrow or today? All right. We're going we're gonna to sing. Marilyn's going to lead us. Yeah, that's right. I did that right there. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody! Happy birthday to you. Give them all of a hand, yeah. Thank you all for coming. Um, Mom and Dad, if you want to order them to stand up here to have pictures, that's, that's on you. Um, there is birthday cake for Dominic, and there are other refreshments and stuff in the back. We're so glad you're here. Uh, and, and please join us again. God bless you.